everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about Festival Hygiene 101. This is an essential video for everyone, no matter who you are, male or female, no matter what festival you are going to, this is an essential. Now I got my download ticket last week, which I'm absolutely over the moon about. I got an EcoCamp ticket, so anyone who's been in EcoCamp before, can you leave it down in the comments below? Because I don't actually know anything about EcoCamp. I've only ever done it at General Camping and I am actually going on my own this year. I know people there, but I'm technically going on my own. Up to now anyway, I'm going on my own. So I wouldn't mind knowing a little bit more about EcoCamp. If you're going, please do comment it down below. But I'm going to download and it got me so excited. So I thought, right, we need to get the festival hygiene video done. And this is what we're going to talk about today. I have broken it down into sections. I'm going to be doing hair hygiene, face hygiene, body hygiene, and then just general hygiene all over. So I have broken it down as best as possible can. So you can just like click through to maybe certain parts if you only want to know certain parts. But I promise you pretty much all of this is essential. There is a few slight things that you do or don't need to take and it's gen and I will mention which ones in the video, but most of it you need like you really really do so no matter what festival you're going to this season whether it's leeds download glastonbury coachella well that's already been and gone but whatever um and also it's just not the same as a uk festival it doesn't even compete but any festival that you're going to for longer than one day you need most of this stuff so with that being said, we're gonna get straight into the video. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and let's just get into it. Okay, so let's start with hair hygiene. So obvious, dry shampoo. Item number one that you need is dry shampoo if you have hair on your head. It makes your hair smell nicer, it keeps your hair looking good, and I find your hair goes in a lot better when you use dry shampoo. Like, I don't struggle with my hair at a festival. It just goes in to the position I need it to go in because the grease and the dry shampoo combo is just elite and makes it go in them positions. So yeah, always recommend dry shampoo. If you are doing refresh and retreat and you are going to wash your hair, no matter what, you're one of the people, you are going to be washing it, then I do recommend taking your shampoo and conditioner. Obviously, decant these into smaller bottles unless you're going to wash it every single day and you know you need a bigger bottle, then fair play. But if you're going to wash it once or twice, just decant what you have at home into a smaller bottle so you're not carrying big bottles. You've got to bear in mind, you've got to get from the car to the campsite now. Everyone keeps leaving comments on certain videos. Like I said, I got my download ticket and I see people saying it's like horrific to walk. But I don't feel like anything will be as horrific as Glastonbury. So I feel like no matter what, it's not going to affect me as much as the glass they walked did. Um, but either way, you still, no matter if the walk is 20 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half, you need to make sure that everything is lightweight. So yeah, definitely recommend decanting these if you are going to take shampoo. Why don't have this hair product, but if you like mousse, you can get dry shampoo in a mousse form. Now, I didn't like it in my hair. It is a personal preference. I do recommend using something like that before you go just to see if you like it because if you rely on it and you don't like it and it's going to make maybe your hair look greasier or 10 times worse, I do recommend just giving it a try before you go. But this is always so much cheaper and so much more affordable and accessible to most people. So there is the option of mousse dry shampoo. Last but not least, when it comes to hair and a scented oil is optional. This is a fully optional one. It's so small, you could probably take it. I will take it for my ends. This is literally mainly just to make your hair smell nice. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, I love the smell of this. But this is to make my hair smell nice. So this is a complete optional product, but I will be taking it. It's not an essential. If I forget it, it's not the end of the world. But I just like to have it so that when I have my hair in braids or I have it down, I like to just run the product through the ends of my hair because you do find your hair gets drier at a festival. Obviously all the elements, the dry shampoo, like the sleep and rough, like everything is just different. So I do prefer to have a little oil to run through my ends, but again, completely optional. This section is all about face hygiene. So this is all down to personal preference. There is a few options that you can do, but the obvious one is a face wash. Now, depending what you do with your face wash, like if you use makeup and stuff, depends on what type of face wash you use. So I like to take one that is oil-based that will lift off all my makeup, do my first cleanse. And then my second cleanse is like my hot cloth one, which which will help just cleanse the skin and lift all them oils and excess whatever's off the face. So I always like to do a face wash and then I also like to take something like this. So this is an erase your face cloth and it's like a flannel specifically for your face. And with just water, you can lift off a lot of makeup from your face. I use this at the end though. I don't use this at first. I use it on my second cleanse to really get anything that's left on the skin off the skin. Now the other option, if you don't want to 
do a makeshift bucket of water and wash your face. You can obviously take something like micellar water. Now micellar water has come in different formats. This one has got oil in. I will take a smaller version of this so that I can get excess lipstick off. Sometimes my lipstick will not budge and certain colours eyeliner doesn't budge. And something like this one is my first pick. It's got oil in it, so it lifts it off, but I couldn't use this on my face for five days. I'd have no skin. I would be in agony. I'd be covered in spots. Like it's just not made for me. So that's like a personal thing. But if you can use my cellar water all weekend and know your face is clean, then I then by all means take my cellar water. You will not see me lifting up a pack of baby or face wipes for your face because I don't recommend it and it is really bad for your skin. Especially if you're someone who's going to be acne prone skin, you really need to think about what you are taking. When you have acne skin, you are going to want to look after your skin when you're at this festival or any festival that you're going to because it's what's going to it's going to make you feel better knowing your skin is looked after and you're not going to have a major breakout when you're there. So definitely recommend take what's personal to you but make sure you have the best option you possibly can for washing That's your face. The face done but obviously we need to go to oral hygiene. Don't forget your oral hygiene. We 100% need it all because sweet Jesus you're there for 5 days. So First off, obviously you need your toothbrush. Now I use an electric toothbrush. I will take an electric toothbrush, but I will take a backup normal toothbrush just in case this one dies on me. I can normally get about six days out of it, but to be on the safe side, I will always take a normal like manual toothbrush. And then obviously you need your toothpaste. Now I just take whatever's in the house, like this weighs nothing. So I just make sure I've got enough for five days. Then you also need your floss. Now I normally use a water flosser. So I hate the fact that I have to swap over to floss for five days, but this just, I'm not gonna even try and squeeze this, especially this little bit, into a camping like kit. I'm not gonna bother. I will always make sure I have got floss. This is something I'd always make sure to take into the arena as well because you never know when you're gonna need it. And then finally, mouthwash. Now mouthwash does tend to come in really big bottles. So I do recommend decanting it into a smaller bottle. I've always just kept a hold of this one. This is a mouthwash from Boots. But always make sure you've got your mouthwash because you could brush your teeth and then you're sitting around the tent and maybe like it's about three hours before you even head to the arena. I would always just like take a little bit of mouthwash before I go. Even though I brush my teeth earlier, I'd just rather refresh and make sure they're nice and clean and ready and ready to go. But that's basically it. You just need your essentials when it comes to oral hygiene. And I know some people might think it's a bit daft taking an electric toothbrush. I hate not having my electric toothbrush. I hate it. Like, it is like torture. It's bad enough that I'm not going to have this. So I'm not going to torture myself anymore. I'm just going to take the electric toothbrush and then take a manual one in case it does die on me. But yeah, always make sure you've got your oral hygiene. Like, so, so, so important. So now we're up to body hygiene. And this part is the bulkier part of the section. And I've filmed this now three times trying to get it right because I end up derailing and going on to different things. So... I am going to try and put this into sections. We're going to do bog standard way of washing, better way of washing, and an even better way of washing. Okay? So the first obvious one for washing at a festival is baby wipes. Now you can buy these non-scented or scented. I personally would say if you can get away with scented wipes and you want your skin to smell nice, then get yourself the scented ones. Just do not use them on your private area. And then non-scented are obviously for the more personal places. Now baby wipes are great to have for washing if you want to use baby wipes. I personally not only don't like using baby wipes, I also find that they are really bad for my skin after like one or two days. So I have to find a different way to wash, which I'll get to in a minute. But baby wipes are an ultimate essential, an ultimate essential. Even if you're not going to wash with these, you need them for washing your hands when you are trying to get your wellies off. When you're trying to get your wellies off, it is literally, especially if it's been muddy, to be in your life. I also don't like touching my wellies because you're going in portaloos and all I can think about when I touch the welly is that the, there's portaloo juice on them and it makes me feel physically sick and I can never get my wellies off when I try and do one heel to the other heel. They can, I can just never get them off. Like I hate trying to get wellies off. They bear me brain out. So I need baby wipes. I will put baby wipes on the boot and then pull the, the welly off 
and it's just good for cleaning your shoes down if it's really muddy or if you need to wipe your legs because mud splattered up your leg you always need a baby wipe i promise you you need baby wipes so baby wipes are an essential also get good wipes do not get these these are the worst wipes i've ever bought they are so dry they're so thick you can't there's not an on them they're awful so i don't recommend huggies whatsoever now if you don't want a baby wipe and you want to really get a wash there's a few options so firstly you've got refresh and retreat at most festivals i'm umming and ardin about the refresh and retreat at the moment with downloads it's 60 pound for the toilet and the shower pass i've read reviews on reddit and both seen videos and there was not good reviews about last year the location wasn't great the fact that you can only really use the toilet once a day because of where the location is also there was a two hour wait for a shower if you didn't get there for half six in the morning so doesn't open till seven but you've got to get there for half six to get in the queue i'm sorry but half six in the morning the festival is like it, it's just no just no it's not what i want to do i am 31 years of age i don't want to be standing in a queue for half an hour two hours now i have done refresh and retreat before i've done it in 2018 the last time and it was great there was no more than a half an hour wait but obviously the more popular something gets and the more people can justify paying the money for it it's going to get more and more popular now i don't know how many showers there was if there's the same amount of showers there was when i was there in 2018 it's going to be no wonder there was a two hour wait because we were waiting 20 minutes to get in one back then so it is a great concept but if there's not enough showers and the wait is two hours that amounts to like nearly 10 hours over the five days to wait for a shower like it's ridiculous i know they're open till i think one or three in the morning but by that point let's face it not m many of us are not going to be in the right frame of mind to be going to a shower and getting a wash like th this is something as well that's wet and you're trying to get in it and they're not very big and you've got to try and drunk no it just isn't gonna work okay so refreshing retreat is an option i'm on an arm about it at the moment however if you don't want to pay for refresh and retreat or you can't afford to pay for refresh and retreat and these are something that you don't want to use on your body we have a old school bucket wash now if you aren't like me growing up when you were little doing a flannel wash then you might need to practice before you go because i was used to it as a kid flannel washers are what i would choose to do if i'm not going to get a refresh and retreat pass now what you need for a flannel wash you need a bucket obviously or a big bowl a big bowl would be perfectly fine as well but i've picked a collapsible bucket so basically when you push the middle out it goes bigger and bigger and bigger so this is the lowest it goes and then it's got three other height parts to it these are amazing like because you can get it into your camping equipment and pack it a lot easier than a normal bucket now with that obviously it's a flannel wash a flannel i'm not going to go and get another one for the purpose of the video this is my face cloth but this would be perfectly fine as well any form of flannel is also essential now from that this is where you're going to get what you need for refresh and retreat excuse me <laughs> refresh and retreat or a bucket wash so you obviously need wash you need to wash yourself with stuff so I personally like to have two types of washers. I like to have Dettel. If you know what Dettel in a bath is, we're on the same page. But Dettel soap, for me, I feel like it's cleaning me, especially at a festival. Now, this is for just the body in general. It's my first wash. I would take some soap on the flannel and I would wash my body. I would then take another wet flannel and get that off. Once I've washed with that, I would then go in with a scented body wash. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to hold this one up. But I would pick something maybe like Sol de Janeiro, Bum Bum Shower Gel, or something like a Treacle Moon. Something that's really scented so that your skin smells really, really nice. And then, obviously, for us ladies, more gentler soap for around that area. Obviously, we all have personal preferences and we have ways of washing. But a femme wash for that area obviously we make sure not to throw our ph balance off but around that area is also essential that's what you need to wash now we need to maintain the wash and keep it nice and clean so say the next one with me deodorant deodorant needs to be in your camping essentials and i don't mean this in a rude way but some people need to go and invest in a, a deodorant that is for them now some deodorants work for some people and some deodorants don't hence why there is many different deodorants on the market so i can't stress enough how much people need to get a deodorant because some people don't take it and i'm not small 
but I know that my friends who are small have struggled at concerts and festivals where there's an armpit near them and the, the stench is just, it's not been fair on them. It's not fair. It's not fair on other people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you can afford to go to a festival, you can afford to get a bottle of deodorant. So deodorant is non-negotiable. And also with the deodorant comes washing you underneath your arms properly. If you are a sweatier person, if you sweat more underneath your arms and you know it and you're worried about it, make sure you wash properly. Make sure you're washing properly. We don't don't reuse t-shirts or anything like that because that will hold any moisture in. So always make sure you're washing underneath properly with something like a body wash and rinsing it off and then going in with the deodorant. Obviously, something like Mitchum's might be a good option. I know a lot of people really like that and Sure Clear Blue is a good one. And I'm trying to think of other ones that people who are more sweaty have raved about and they said, I really got, I hate the word sweatier. It just isn't a nice terminology, is it? Just, and I'm saying that in the politest way as I possibly can. When I'm saying sweaty, I don't mean that in like a, a rude or nasty way. It's just the way life is. I sweat more down my back than my underarms. My underarms are extremely dry. I actually don't sweat that much under my arms and they hurt a lot. I end up with a lot of a lot of broken skin under my arms. So I have to be careful with a deodorant choice. I have to pick more moisturising ones because of that. Anyway, moving on, that is deodorant. Please make sure you take a deodorant. Next up is us bustier girls and chafing and anything in that section. Baby powder. This is a godsend. It doesn't matter if it's sunny or it's raining somewhere along the line you're probably going to need baby powder so i do just personally recommend getting baby powder or some form of talcum powder for the body and this for me will be going right underneath them boobs that's where it's going and that's what it's for but everyone has a personal preference with it so again personal preference but i do recommend baby powder or body towel so once we put deodorant on we've done our powders and everything like that i'm going to say that the next essential is moisturizer for the body now some people might say there is no need to be taking body moisturizer yes there is Especially Especially if you have dry skin, especially if it's hot and all things like that. There's many different factors to counter in for a moisturiser. Now, the most, I would say the best all-round moisturiser for your body to take is after sun. This covers you for both moisturising your body on a daily basis. Why is there a piece of... Oh, yeah, that's taped because of a holiday. I always make sure I tape over the lids in case it leaks. Which, anything like this for a festival, make sure you tape over because you're going to need to in case it leaks. Um, after sun not only is good for just a general moisturiser, it smells lovely so your skin's going to smell nice, it soaks in really quick so you haven't got to wait long and also if it does end up being really hot and you end up with any little bit of sunburn, you're going to need some after sun. So for me, the best one to take for an all round body moisturiser is after sun. Something that smells really nice, this is just going to give you that extra little feeling of clean, it's going to make you smell nice and it's just going to all around make you feel better. At a festival you are going to end up with lumps and bumps on the back of your thighs from sitting on the grass, sitting on dirty camping chairs, when you've got tights on or no tights with shorts, your legs come in contact with more than you realise and they end up with sometimes little lumps and bumps on the back of them and it's just not aesthetically pleasing to me so i don't want it there i'm not bothered on anybody else but on me i don't want it there and you just might want to nip it in the bud before it happens so i always recommend taking like some form of salicylic acid moisturizer serum or toner for those sorts of areas and for moisturizers for the body is obviously sun cream now something this size is perfect for the arena highly recommend getting a miniature one you can then also just refill it with the one throughout the festival in case it is a really hot festival you're not going to go through more than 50 mils of moisturizer in a day or within a few hours in the arena so i do recommend taking a smaller one and then obviously you're still going to put your mass amount on before you even leave the tent anyway for a factor 30 or 50 nothing less i don't see the point in taking anything less to a festival because I promise you, my friend burnt one year, it was our first year at a festival, she burnt, was it, it? Yeah, it was our first, our first year at Leeds and she burnt and she was a human radiator. For me personally, it was great because we were sharing a bed, for her, not so much and honestly, it's just so uncomfortable to be burnt at home, never mind when you're camping, never mind when you're camping a lot rougher than what you would if you were going to a campsite. So honestly, sun cream is a must. I like taking heavily scented ones because they smell nice. I also like taking shimmer ones because I like to be very shimmery. But that again, personal preference, just make sure you've got your SPF. If you are looking for a lightweight SPF and a spray format, there's a brown bottle in Aldi and they do factor 30, I think is the highest in it. 
it's so light you barely feel it on the skin which by the way when you're not washing properly is a nightmare to get off a heavy duty spf is so hard to get off when you haven't got warm water so i do recommend the lightest spf you can find as in lightweight not obviously the lightest as in factor 10 make sure it's factor 30 or 50 but really light and that one is amazing and also if you are medium to dark skin you are going to find that that doesn't have a white cast either so that's perfect for you next up we're going to go with a razor i am laser hair removal so i don't need to worry about this but i know that back in the day it was something i 100 percent used to worry about Obviously, it's personal preference. I personally would recommend getting a wax before you go in the places that you think you're going to end up wanting to shave. It just makes your life easier. I'm all for an easy life. Like, that's what I am like. I like an easy life. So if you're going to shave, it might be an idea to get a wax. If you can't get a wax, or you can't afford one, and you're trying to keep the cost of your festival minimal, then obviously take your razors. Fellas, you, you know what you're doing with razors, so you, you take what you need. And then finally, when it comes to um body hygiene i would definitely say your towel is a must have make sure you've got a good towel and if you can get a fiber towel that is also great because they dry and then if you are getting a refresh and retreat or you plan on using the general showers at a festival you need a swimming costume if you're using the general ones obviously you can go completely naked that is personal preference i wouldn't just because that's not who i am but i can imagine it'd be quite freeing but i wouldn't i would end up having to take a cozy and then also flip-flops no matter what you are using take flip flops because you never know who's got a veruca, you never know who's got anything on the feet. Okay, so we're in the final section. I know this video is probably a little bit longer than you expected, but if up to now you might agree with me, I have gave you as many options as I possibly can with hygiene, and I feel like this is the best way to tell everyone how to get a wash. So I do apologize that this is a little bit lengthy of a video, but finally we are in general hygiene, and you're probably wondering. She hasn't mentioned hand sanitizer yet. I also didn't mention hand sanitizer in my essentials video that everyone keeps telling me I didn't mention hand sanitizer. We just left COVID. I did not think for a second that anyone would question taking hand sanitizer. I kind of thought it would be an obvious one. This is a Bath and Body Works one. This is like a little pumpkin latte one. And I absolutely love these dainty little sizes. They're really easy to throw into your handbag or your bag or your pocket, depending if you're not wanting a bag. So that's why I like these little ones. Then you want to take things like perfume. I would only take one because it's going to be in your hair. It's going to be on your skin probably embedded. You know when perfume gets embedded into the skin? I know I'll wear like a very heavy duty perfume. So it'll be on my jacket, it'll be on my hoodie. So I'll just stick with one perfume for the whole trip. You can't take perfume into an arena. Then you've also got body mists. Now I don't recommend either of these if you want longevity. They smell absolutely stunning, but they do not last two seconds. This one in particular, this one lasts a lot longer than this one, but they still don't last long enough for like a festival. So obviously men, after shave, this is where you could use your links on your body. That's when links comes in. Links is not a proper deodorant. Use a proper deodorant and then a body spray. Same goes for like if you're a girl, don't use body spray underneath your arms. You need to be using deodorant and then body sprays on your, your skin and your clothes and stuff like that then i also recommend taking things like these so these are anti-back wipes honestly anti-back wipes are the best thing i don't care what anyone says hand sanitizer doesn't feel the same as wiping your hand with an anti-back wipe especially when you're out to eat something i like having a wipe it's just so much better these come in handy as well when you go in the toilet if you need to wipe anything i mean hover 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 my hygiene tip of the video this is my ultimate tip hover hover I, I can't even comprehend sitting on a portal. If you do, you do you, but I cannot. And with that comes a Shiwi. You need a Shiwi. This is clean, by the way. This is brand new. You can get them from um, Shein or you can get them from Amazon, which is a little bit more pricey. I do recommend trying to find them as cheap as possible and get more than one. There's always someone that wants one, needs one, or you just lose it and you don't want to lose it because, my God, these are fab. Like, honestly, I can't explain how much these change the game at a festival when you need a wee. Now, I love all these like festival outfits. I think they're fabulous. I really, really do. All these girls and, and boys who wear all these fab outfits, all I think about half the time when I look at them is think, how are you going for a wee? You've got to get your chains off, your um, garters off, your fishnets down, crotchless tights. Biggest tip for anyone, crotchless tights because you aren't going to worry about getting them up and down in the portal. Honestly, these are the things you've got to think about if you want to make your life easier. People look amazing, but I know they're in the portal for a good five minutes, probably just 
declothing before they even get to have a wee. But once you are declothed, or whatever you have to do in the toilet with your outfit of choice, a she wee is an absolute essential. I can't. This is probably one of the best things that was ever invented because you men don't realise how lucky it is to just be able to pee wherever you want. Now, I've got stories, personal stories about peeing in places that I probably will never put on the internet because it's, I'm not doing it. But when you need a wee as a girl, it's really, really difficult. It's, it's horrible, especially when you stood in a crowd and you're just looking around and thinking, oh my God, when am I going to go and pee? At least with this, your mates can cover and you can be in a bottle. So always take a shiwi. And that is, oh, one last one, one last one. For us people who like to wear makeup, this looks really rude. Actually, I'm going to take that out so you know what I'm actually showing you. This is ISO Clean. So any form of makeup brush cleaner is good. This one just speeds up the drying process a little bit. Oh, that was wet. Is that leaking? Um, this speeds up the drying process a little bit. So... I recommend cleaning your brushes after every use, putting them away, letting them dry, and then you'll be able to use them the next day. Just make sure you take some clean because try and make sure you're clean. And obviously if you suffer with your skin and you're acne prone, always make sure you've got brush cleaner. And um, yeah, just make sure you've got your brush cleaner. And that is the end of this video. I hope you've liked it. I hope it helps anyone going to any festivals. If you're going to downloads, I might see you there. Yeah, if not, I will see you in the next festival video. I'm gonna do another essentials video, I promise. I will see you next time. Bye.